Hi, everyone. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Brownwood Lions Coach Show here on KOHC. I am Derek Stuckley, along with Brownwood Lions head football coach, athletic director, Sammy Burnett. And we are two days away from kickoff. But before we jump into that, let's talk a little bit about the uh, volleyball game last night. I know you were on hand. I was on hand. The Lady Lions didn't come out on top, but they definitely played a, a solid match, and they look like they're, they're headed in the right direction for sure. You know, we, we talked about it before programs, you know, losing big, losing small, winning small, winning big. We're right at that verge. I mean, we lost some close games close. I mean, we lost uh, all three matches were extremely close. And it seemed like we found a way not to get it done. It's the same thing I explained to you uh, earlier in football, uh, in the big games. Find a way to get over that hump, win the big Boy, they were really close last night. Uh, but it just didn't happen for us. But I tell you what, their passion that they have, their desire to be successful, their willingness to be coachable, is gonna come, it's going to happen. When will it happen? I don't know. But it will happen at some point. When it clicks and it does, you're going to see them grow uh, in leaps and bounds. So I was really – I enjoyed every minute of it last night. I went to five games. Uh, we lost the last one close, as we did the, the two the other matches that we lost. And uh, uh, But like I said, I saw desire, and I saw heart, and I saw effort and uh, a, a commitment to get better, and that's all you can ask for as an AD. Uh, I thought uh, Coach Lovelady called some crucial timeouts at the right, you know, just at the right time when we needed it, and made it, they bounced back and got back in some matches. So, I, I, like I said, were they victorious? No. Uh, but were they on the verge? Yes. And if they keep pushing, they'll get over that hump, and we'll see great things from them. But uh, I, I couldn't have been more pleased with them uh, than I was last night because uh, those that go out and compete all the time aren't always guaranteed a win, uh, but you're guaranteed uh, growth and you're guaranteed development and a sense of character and pride that you that you have when you don't just sit on the sideline. You know, it's easy to sit on the sideline. It's not easy to get out there and compete when you have a chance to lose. It's how you respond to those adversities that count, and I think our girls are going to respond real well. So I tip my hat to them. I'm really pleased with what they're doing. Yeah, it was just the second time I've seen them play this year, but you could tell that they were more comfortable with each other, and mm -hmm. they looked a lot more confident, and, yeah, they were just right on the verge there. Yeah, and, again, it takes time for, for Coach Lovelady to figure out our girls and who works best together and what uh, situation she wants to put her girls in on the front line and back line, and I don't understand all that, but i got a decent idea of how they do it. But, you know, uh, it's going to take her time to learn. And I revert back to, like I said, when we got here uh, and played on Friday night on Fox Sports Southwest and knowing that we're against a worthy opponent and really didn't know our kids. Uh, hindsight's always twenty twenty, but if I'd have known our kids and their abilities at the time, we sure put someone in, in, some of them in positions not to be successful. And that's our fault as coaches. But yet when you don't know who your kids are, it's hard to figure that out. It takes time to figure that out. And that's where she's at, and that's what she's having to do. So. I tip my hat to them. They, they're making no excuses. They're just working hard, and that will pay off at some point. So, like I said, again, I'm, I'm really pleased with where they're at and what they're doing. Uh, speaking of paying off, the tennis team picked up another win yesterday at San Angelo Lake. Yeah, they beat uh, the Chiefs 16-3, to which is typical for Coach Blazing and her crew. And I've been ribbing her a little bit because she's been at Snyder for a long time, and they happened to drop that match. She said they just didn't get off the bus and – they stumped her toe early in the first sets and did, couldn't overcome it. So I've been ribbing her just a little bit because I know how much she, she likes to beat Snyder and blah, blah, blah. But uh, oh, I ribbed her enough that she got them back in the win column. So I couldn't talk noise to her this week because she cleaned up San Angelo Lakeview like they can. So uh, congratulations to her, and I'm sorry for ribbing you, Coach. I love you. <laughs> yeah, they've got the weekend off, and they're not in action again until next week. No, what we have for the rest of the week is just volleyball. Uh, they've done some rescheduling over there. They tend to do that to us a lot, but we just got that today. So uh, volleyball has moved to uh, Thursday at 8 and 10 in the morning and then on uh, Saturday, so no games on Friday. Don't know what time. Dublin, right? That's Dublin in Dublin, tournament. yeah. Dublin tournament, 8 and 10 on Thursday and Saturday. And then, of course, uh, football-wise, our sub varsities will be in action with the white team going to Abilene Wiley and playing there at 4 o'clock. Uh, and we'll host their ninth grade maroon at 5 o'clock and their JV at 6.30 at Gordonwood Stadium. You can get your tickets uh, at, at Gordonwood Stadium for those games. Again, on Friday night, tickets for the game, which will be a 7 o'clock kickoff. Uh, will be, uh, you can go to the app, which is online at Brownwood I, Brown I, sorry, Brownwood. Uh, high school athletics and the link to get those tickets are there or you'll have to purchase them with the type of card when you get to the stadium but they're taking no cash but uh, 
we've done that before we understand how that is so get those tickets in advance or pay for them at the door i think they're like eight dollars at the door all tickets mm -hmm. so if you want to break on those you need to get them ahead of time if not get them at the gate yeah, with a debit or credit card all right and then friday night at seven varsity is at abilene wiley and Coach, how are you feeling about the guys two days away from the opener? Uh, you know, Monday is always a tough day for coaches. You're trying to install uh, what you want to do that week. It's new for the kids. Sometimes I get impatient or I start to worry because it doesn't seem like we're having a great day because we're having to stop and teach and we're messing up. But you know what? That is Monday. Monday is a teaching day. It's a mental Monday. You know, we got to learn everything on Monday, then we go try to execute it. Well, of course you're not going to be able to execute it. So I challenge them to come back Tuesday and do well Tuesday so we don't have to reteach Monday and our kids really responded yesterday I thought we had a really good practice things started to come into shape and then today as well as more of a you know a whisper Wednesdays what well, we tough Tuesday and whisper Wednesday so whisper Wednesday is more of them figuring things out like they don't have a coach out there we give them what we want them to do they got to go out there like they're on their field as a team and a unit and communicate with each other so that's whisper wednesday i thought they're you know they're taking it serious as they taken everything serious throughout uh, off season and into seven on seven and, and now i mean they really have high expectations uh they're not going to worry that we're not worrying about all we're worrying about is us and what we can do to make ourselves better so that when we get to district we can be successful and you know we're seven point dogs in harris but that's just fuel for us uh we feel like we can play with anybody wiley it doesn't matter you know, went to the semis last year. We felt we should have beat them. Uh, we felt we gave them the game. Regardless of what we feel, they they found a way to get that game won. We're in the same boat as the volleyball team. We got to get in a close ball game, one that's a battle to the end, and we got to find a way to get on top and not find ways to give them opportunities to score. Uh, we're going to be led with our defense. Our defense have got, has got to keep them out of the end zone, have got to meet their goals for the game, which I think is 13 points or less. Uh, and offensively, we got to put some points on the board and execute some drives, and every time we have a drive, Hopefully that ends up in, in uh, some form of kick so there's no turnover or uh, we get points on the board. So And then, of course, win the special team game. Uh, as far as their offense and defense goes, what do you expect to see out of Wiley? Uh, you know, they have their, their slot receiver. Uh, his name is Braden uh, Ringala. The Ringala. Uh, he's an outstanding athlete. I mean, he's a jitterbug kind of guy. He's a Wes Welker kind of slot receiver for him. He does their RPO stuff. He's really good. He ran the reverse against us last year that he broke for big time and scored a touchdown. So uh, we got to make sure that we stymie him and what they're trying to do with him, rally to the ball. Uh, don't let him get yards after a catch because he's really good at that. And they do a great job of getting him in space and getting him open uh, to try to get him the ball in space. So uh, we're going to have to minimize that. Uh, Quarterback-wise, I'm not sure who they're going to start. I know they have Bear Merg, I think his name is. I think he's a moving. I think his dad is one of them that came uh, with them from LaGrange. And then they had the young man that moved in from uh, uh, Abilene Cooper a couple years ago. His name is Keegan Anderson. Uh, both very uh, good quarterbacks. Uh, they're both uh, they're sort of the same uh, in the way they do things. The difference is one's a right-handed deliverer and one's a left-handed deliverer of the ball. Uh, but they're both high-quality young men that can play that position well. So, uh, And then, of course, if you look up front, they got uh, Cameron Bain, who's uh, I think he's a TCU commit. He's 6'5", 230, two, I mean 330, 325, somewhere there. He's a big young man. But you don't have to look very far. They're going to have a lot of big young men. That's one thing they're blessed with is size. Uh, so we're going to have to beat them with speed and beat them with leverage, you know, and, and uh, on both sides of the ball. And, and uh, just execute, but it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to, to measure where we're at. I think I don't know what we're ranked. I think uh, third, seventeenth, thirteenth, something yeah. like that. And they're somewhere around in there too mm -hmm. in their classification. So it's going to be two uh, well-versed schools that know each other very well and and understand each other and going to go out there and try to beat each other up for forty-eight minutes. And the one that makes the fewest mistakes and and uh, you know uh, implements their game plan the best is going to be the one that's successful. Uh, I guess as far as their defense, what concerns you the most about that? Uh, you know, they do a good job of the RPO game. Uh, we got to make sure that we, like I said, we we got to know where AD is and what he's trying to do. Uh, we got to limit them to what they do. You know, try to make them, uh, uh, you know, uh, not multiple-handed. Let's take one card out of their hand and make them play the other one. Let's dictate what they do, not uh, let them dictate what they want to do on us. So we need to stop the run game, uh, stop the RPO game, make them throw the football on the offensive side. You know me. We're going to run the football, we're going to run the football, we're going to run the football. We've got to establish a line of scrimmage. 
I got to be domino on the line of scrimmage. Well, I got three yards of pop. Three yards of pop will turn into five, will turn into first downs. It'll turn into them have to reduce the field and bring people back in the box, which will open up our passing game uh, and give us a chance to get kids out in space and get them the ball. But uh, that's our MO. That's what we're going to try to do. You know, we'll mix them up uh, from time to time and, and play those downs backwards, uh, you know, where we're not just running the ball first down. We'll mix that up. You know, we have our RPO, RPO game ourselves. Uh, we got some some great passing concepts that we're ready to implement for them and, and uh, just go out there and execute and have fun, enjoy the game. I mean, our kids have been working a long time. It's been mm -hmm. since December. They've been putting in work. Now just go out there and, and know that you prepared yourself and you're ready to go and be confident, play physical, and play fast, and have fun. Um, I know we've talked about this before, the five new offensive linemen, and I think we said Monday, what, five sophomores are starting on offense? That's correct. Right. We have three three receivers, sophomores. We've got a running back that's a sophomore, and our right tackle, the right guard is a sophomore. So with that said, what do you want? Obviously, you want to see a victory, but what do you want to see out of both sides of the ball aside from the victory Friday night? I want to see, you know, gaining confidence, gaining uh, – I want them to gel. I want them to, to figure it out and play together. I don't want to see adversity where we're – bickering amongst each other but yet we're drawing strength from each other that it's okay I can do my job I want to see leadership uh, you're going to bust an assignment you're going to bust a play what are you going to do to play the next play you got to have a short memory you got to block out the past and play for the future and I want to see just that mentality that winner's mentality that says I'm in control of everything uh, I can go and only do what I can do I got to learn from the past and go ready to be ready to face the future and and I mean, what I mean by that is play the next play, man. Go play the next play. Don't look up at the scoreboard because it doesn't matter. What matters is the effort that you put on the field and the heart that you leave out there when it's done. You walk off that field feeling victorious because you gave it everything that you possibly had. The scoreboard will wind up taking care of itself. Right. Um, some teams like to open the season against somebody they can get an easy win against. Obviously, y'all are playing a very solid team. Just talk about the advantages of, of playing a team of that caliber right out of the game. Ooh, you better get ready or they're going to hit you in the mouth. That's pretty simple. I mean, you better learn to fight real fast uh, because they're going to bring it. You know, they got 73 kids on the roster. Uh, they're going to have the advantage when it comes to cardiovascular, the ability to move more kids in and out and shuffle kids in and out. Well, we may not have that opportunity, but, you know what, we feel like we're pretty tough and we want to display our toughness and go out there and, and uh, let, let everybody know it doesn't matter the numbers. You can only put 11 on the field at one time. We're going to put our 11 out there and let's put those hands up and, and go to work. You know, it's a dog fight. It's a battle. So we want to test our, our mettle and, you know, see where we are, see how tough we are, you know, how mentally tough, how physically tough are we, how do we respond to adversity, how do we accept success. So what are the keys, what has to happen then for you all to come away with the win Friday night? I think uh, not. don't give up the big play on offense, make them drive the field and score. And then same thing for us, we cannot turn over the football. We can't have penalties that get us behind the chains. We've got to stay in front of the chains, keep the chains moving, eventually get in a position where we can put some points on the board. Uh, the clock control, I think, is going to be important. Who owns the time of possession on the clock will be huge. Uh, we can't ask our defense to be on the field all night long and get us out of jams. We've got to uh, control the clock, move the ball on the ground, take advantage of the opportunities we have. Again, penalties and turnovers will kill us. Got to stay in front of the chains and, and utilize every opportunity we have uh, to be successful. Uh, special teams in the first game, how important are those? Uh, I, I think they're a lot more. Uh, you don't want to say they're more important than later in the year, but a lot of times they're not as advanced in the special teams games, and you can make mistakes early. Hence us snapping the ball over our head for a safety last year. That sort of started the momentum swing for them. Uh, we the game 17 points just sort of get to them. Uh, yes, they earned them, but we feel like they were gifts. We can't do that. Uh, you know, we got to be solid. And like I said, sometimes a punt is a good thing. If you can reverse the field and make them have a long field, cause a turnover, force a punt, force a bad punt where you shorten your field for your next drive and sort of stay in their, their side of the field is huge. Uh, so special teams is very big. I mean, you can get seven points from a busted punt coverage to a busted kick return coverage, uh, you know, kickoff coverage. So we've been stressing that a lot. Uh, how important it is to get down there and make tackles and hustle and know that the most important uh, play that you can make is the one that you're involved in right now. It doesn't matter if it's offense, defense, or special teams. They're all three important, and we all got to make our plays. All right. Did we cover everything? I did think we, we did. Did. We, did we leave anything out? I don't know. Oh, I think that's it. All right. Anything else we need to talk yep. about today? Coach? Those people that allow us to do this twice a week, our sponsors, Auto Glass Magic, Brunner Auto Group, Syntex Body and Paint, Syntex Equipment Sales, Citizens National Bank, Dan Hill Containers, Dr. Bon Young, Dr. Pepper Bottling Company, Edward Jones Investments, Henrik Medical, Howie Enterprises, Humphrey Pete's, Heartland Funeral Home, 
Landmark Admin, NC Bank, Painter & Johnson Associates, Smith & Sharp Agency, Sonic Drive-In, Stanley Chrysler, Texas Bank, Weldon Wilson Electric, Western Bank, and Willie T's. All right, we will be back Monday to recap the Wiley game and look ahead to the Marble Falls game here on the Brownwood Lions Coaches Show on KOXC, KOXC.com, the KOXC app, and the KOXC Facebook pages. See you Friday, Brownwood.